love you guys. It's great. And they were going, yes, now we own everything and we're in control. <laughs> and we have the right to kill all you guys. What? Are you crazy? American Indians thought that Europeans were nuts. Because they were saying the land belongs to us or the land belongs to our queen. Huh? The Native Americans were like, you guys are out of your minds, man. The land belongs to God. God created the earth. You didn't create the earth. How could it be yours? This is a crazy idea. Huh? If you think about it, it really is a crazy idea. If you go up in a plane, you know, it's not like you fly to Mexico like I do. And it, when you go over the border, you don't see like a line in the sand. You know, well, maybe you do now that they built a fence. But, <laughs> you know, it's not like, it's not like God went, uh, okay, this is America. On this side, this is Mexico over here. No, there's no line. It's just a, it's just a desert. It's just a, it's just a piece of land, huh? and it all belongs to God because God created. God created. <clears throat> so what does He say? How we should use it, utilize it? He says everything that is beautiful, everything that is powerful, everything that is desirable or wonderful or pure should be offered unto me, he says in Bhagavad Gita. So when we take God's energy, whatever that is, anything that happens to come within our control, or within our jurisdiction or experience, and we offer that back to him, what happens is God's energy then comes into a relationship with him, and it becomes spiritualized. So this uh, apparently material energy can become spiritualized when we see it in relationship with God. One time uh, Lord Brahma asked Krishna, what is this material existence? And Krishna said, material existence means energy that is apparently separated from me. It's my energy. But if you see it as existing separately from me, then you're seeing it as matter. But that's your vision. My vision is that it's my energy, it's related to me, and it's used it for my purposes. Therefore, it's spiritual. It's spiritual because its meaning is spiritual. And when we see it, it should remind us of God. In fact, somebody asked Lord Brahma one time, well, what is the value of this material world if it's energy that's separate from, from God? And uh, he said, well, actually, it's not separate from God because it comes from God, and then it enters back into him at the end. So the value of this material world, that it, it is energy in relation with Vishnu. Energy in relation with Vishnu. So I'm leading up to something by this talk. <laughs> We're going to talk about Jyotish today. And Jyotish is a science whose ultimate principle is to see the material world as energy in relation to Vishnu, energy in relation to God. So when we look at uh, the astrological signs and the planets and stuff like that, we can see them as being related to God. Not that they exist independently or separately from God. And this helps us stay in the proper consciousness, helps us heal the disease of material consciousness. It's a diseased condition. If we think that uh, we are separate from God or that anything is separate from God, and we're not seeing it as it is. We're seeing it in a, you know, like, uh, in a jaundiced way. Huh? Do you ever know anybody that got this disease, jaundice? It's a, it's a liver malfunction. And basically, uh, your whole body turns yellow. It's really weird. And your eyes also, they get, everything has this yellowish tinge. You can't see anything normally. Huh? So it's like a person with jaundice they don't see normally. They see every, as if they had yellow tinted glasses on all the time. Huh? So they can't see 
things as they really are. They can only see, you know, according to this diseased vision. Right? And the funny thing is, uh, the, uh, the specific cure for jaundice is sugar. Sugar can't, refined sugar. Huh? You have to eat a lot and a lot and a lot of refined sugar. But when you're in, in the condition of jaundice, it tastes bitter. It doesn't taste sweet. There's something wrong with your body chemistry. Huh? And uh, you take sugar, which is normally very pleasant, and it's like, ugh, it's bitter. And it's like eating lemons or something like that. Something, somebody's coming? Oh, goody. Come in. Come in. Come on in. Come in. has jaundice, the cure is to eat sugar cane. It's like the, the most intense refined sugar possible, but it tastes bitter. So somehow or other they have to eat, and if they can eat enough sugar candy to, to change their body chemistry, then the yellow tint disappears and they can see everything normally. So it's a good analogy of this material disease. In, in this material disease, it's like we have jaundice, and we don't see things as they are, really. We see them with this whole, this material tint, you know, this material cast to it, that, oh, this thing is existing separate from God. And uh, because of that, we think, oh, then I can own this. I can possess this. I can use it for my pleasure. Uh, and because of this, because we have this conception or this misconception, that I can use this for my pleasure, then we have to accept the karma that comes along with like ripping off that object from God. Uh, if a person is a thief, you know, they go down to the store and they put something in their pocket and try to walk out, you know, and the alarm goes off <laughs> and then they get caught. Well, they either either they have to pay for it or they have to, you know, be punished or go to jail or something. Is a penalty. So it's okay to use God's energy for His purposes, but it's not okay to use it for our purposes. Huh? I mean, we can do it, but then we have to pay for it, and that's called karma. It's just like you know, if if we um, if we are friends with the guy who owns the store, and we're we're using something from the store with his permission, uh, you know, for some charitable purpose or something like that. Then we can go to the store and we can take stuff out of the store without having to pay for it. Because the owner of the store agrees. Huh? He says, I, I have some charitable uh, purpose or organization and I want you to use this stuff in my store, you know, for this program. So just go down and take it, you know, it's, it's okay. So we get his permission and then we know get charged. But if we take it without his permission, then we have to pay for it. And if we steal it, then there's also punishment. <clears throat> so actually everything is like that. Everything is actually the, the property of God because God created it. We didn't create it. It belongs to God. And he has given extensive instructions in the scriptures how he wants this stuff used. Uh, he wants it used is in a per, in a process of sacrifice. The sacrifice here doesn't mean, you know, like uh, uh, taking some animal and throwing it in the fire or something like that, you know. Uh, sacrifice here means that we take God's energy and we engage that energy in His service according to His instructions to fulfill His purposes. That's the Vedic meaning of sacrifice. Jagnya is the Sanskrit word. Jagnya means if we have some object in the material world, before we take it, like there's so many things that we need. We need food, we need shelter, we need clothing, we need you know, so many things. No, that's all right. We're God's children. We also belong to God. So we can have those things that we need to exist. That's why he created them. But 
we have to offer them to Him before we take them. Why? So that we are conscious of the relationship of God's energy with God. So that we put this material energy back into its correct relationship with its source, with its creator. Then we can take that and it's okay. Uh, um, just like food is the example. Uh, we were talking earlier that, that we're not really vegetarians. We're prashadarians. <laughs> Prashadam means food offered to God, or actually anything that's offered to God. And then we take the remnants. So when we prepare food, we prepare nice vegetarian food, very pure, huh? because this is what God asks for in the scriptures. And we'll get into the requirements for that and where that all comes from and why it's like that and everything uh, later on today. But anyway, he makes